Hey, and welcome back everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. You're safe and sound, but most importantly, healthy during those weird and extremely uncertain times. I've been gone from this channel for what feels like forever. In actuality, a couple of years, and therefore <laughs> filming again right now feels extremely awkward for me personally. But anyways, I very recently moved into a new apartment and this is one of the reasons why I have a different background and the quality as well as the sound of the video is not what it used to be. That is because during my move, some of my equipment broke unfortunately and therefore I have to use my MacBook Pro. A few days ago, I asked you on my Instagram what video you would like to see next in the context of perfumery and you said that you wanted to see my more affordable fragrances in my collection so this is why I'm here and without further rambling on <laughs> let's get started this video is going to be right up your alley if you also happen to share the obsession for gourmand scents so anything that smells really sweet and heavy thick almost syrupy, just delicious and delectable, like candy or any sort of confectionery, you will definitely going to discover some fragrances that you will love, even in a blind purchase. So the first affordable fragrance that I have in my collection that I automatically had to think about is by Roberto Cavalli. This is just Cavalli Gold for her. This is a sweet, nutty, creamy floral, a gorgeous gourmand that starts out with a blast of toasted hazelnuts, creamy fluffy marshmallows with white flowers in this sexy, smooth, soft leather. It's an all in all very powerful, kind of loud, like very present fragrance. Like people are going to detect this fragrance when you wear this. It is really feminine, sexy and complex, yet at the same time really, really sweet. And whenever I wear this, I'm usually out with girlfriends to a party or in a very heavily crowded place, which obviously right now we can't, but I used to wear this for parties quite a lot because you get noticed in a very positive way. It's really feminine and sweet and I get a lot of compliments when I'm out while wearing this. It's really, really gorgeous. So this is Roberto Cavalli, just for her gold. Next up is Stella McCartney. Stella. This is a fresh, clean rose scent that is on the semi-sweet side, definitely feminine leaning, but I can still see a man wearing this, especially in the springtime. It's gorgeous for any occasion. It makes me feel really womanly, feminine. <laughs> I love to wear this during spring with a, with a dress. It makes me happy when I smell it. It's really, really gorgeous. And I feel like it's also very mass pleasing. Like a lot of people enjoy wearing this. It's not too in your face. It's not too sweet. It's not too heavy, anything like that. This is a typical spring and summer fragrance for me. Stella McCartney, Stella. I absolutely had to mention this. Jessica Simpson, fancy. It belongs to the category of fragrances that I love to wear when I go to sleep. I was inspired by Amy Love's perfume and ever since, oh my goodness, I can almost blindly trust her when it comes to her bedtime scents. It's one of the better made celebrity fragrances, hands down. It smells rich, sweet, like lots of caramel and toffee, almonds. I can definitely detect a vanilla note in here, but more in an ice creamy type of way. It's gooey and just utterly delicious. And although it is mentioned in the notes, I personally can't detect the apricots in here. Apparently there are a lot of fruits in this fragrance. I don't smell them. For me, it's just a very warm, rich and sweet more like in the in the confectionery aisle type of fragrance, and I love it. Next up is Oscar de la Renta Velvet Noir. 
a huge bottle with a lot of content. You definitely get a lot of bang for your buck with this one. I think it was around 20 to 25 euros. This is a super unisex fragrance that I started out not liking as much, to be honest. I still wouldn't consider this my favorite, but it is affordable. I think I don't like it as much because it does, at least on me, lean very masculine. It is a fresh, florally, oody, rosy type of scent where I definitely detect a little bit of ginger in the background, but not in a zingy and pungent type of way. It's very soft and underlying. I like to wear this every now and then uh, during the warmer months, especially in spring, because it does smell fresher and I actually don't wear that many because I don't own that many fresher scents. This is only one of the few, but I don't think it's going to be in my favorites ever, yet still it is very affordable. Oscar de la Renta, Velvet Noir. Good old Jill Sander. This is simply Jill Sander. Um, eau de poudre, I think, or just poudre. It smells like powder, therefore. I love this. Like, this is the type of scent that I would naturally gravitate to after taking a shower, smelling really fresh and powdery, almost like in this uh, baby powder type of way. It's a little bit floral, definitely feminine. A little bit sweet. It's gorgeous. I highly recommend it and it's super, super cheap. I have to continue with a little bit of a naughty one. At least to me, this is a super sexy, feminine fragrance that is not too sweet. It's not too in your face. It has the right amount of softness. This is Donna Karen Liquid Cashmere Black. This is hands down the one fragrance where I get the most compliments off from women and men whenever I wear this. It is a super sexy, dark, sultry, and sensual fragrance to me personally. It is a really nice floral cherry blend, um, definitely with a woody base. I think it's sandalwood. I don't detect the patchouli in here too much. It comes off too light for my nose. It is such a well blended, gorgeous and delicious perfume for me. It initially reminded me of La Robe Noire from Guerlain. This one is just thicker and I feel like also even more complex. It's, it's irresistible, it's sexy. It's kind of this naughty cherry gourmand. I wear this all year round. I feel like a femme fatale with a Donna Karan liquid cashmere black. As the lighting gets darker, so do the bottles. <laughs> well, this is George Resch Muse du Soir. The first time I smelled it, I automatically had to think about Locum by Keiko Macheri. And to me, this is a pretty exact dupe. It's almost identical to her fragrance. So this is surrounded by the theme of syrupy, thick, gooey roses and cherry blossom, as well as vanilla. It smells delicious, delectable, really, really sweet, yet warm. And I love to wear this mostly in the autumn and winter time. I think around about 15 euros in TK Maxx. I always happen to see George Resch in TK Maxx a lot. So definitely check it out when you see it. In case you guys didn't know, I am a major honey fragrance affascinato. I love anything that smells like authentic, true, sweet, deep, complex honey. And I made it a mission of mine to basically collect all of them. And one of the ones that are very affordable yet had been discontinued is Calvin Klein Euphoria Gold. The first time I smelled this, I couldn't believe it. This one smells like an authentic, juicy, a little bit fruity oriental edition of a honey. 
I straight up only smell the light variety of honey. White flowers in the background, I think it is, I think it is gardenias. It's not too sweet, it's not too in your face, it doesn't give you a headache. You can still get this online. I'm going to continue with one of my all-time favorite fragrances. To me, this is a 10 out of 10. In one word, divine fragrance. I I love it so much and I love it so much that I have put it in my personal top five fragrances that I definitely never want to miss. This is Marshmallow by Moore. The name of the fragrance is quite deceiving because I don't feel like that it smells like marshmallows at all. So it doesn't smell like sugary, fluffy, airy, anything like that. This is a thick, sweet and strong sugared rose with a musky twist and a little bit of powder and vanilla in the background, but mostly these are liquid, syrupy, sweet roses in a bottle. It reminds me quite a lot of Turkish Delight. There is a certain candy in Turkey that I used to eat. It, it puts me at ease every single time. It makes me feel cozy. It's like this warm, fuzzy blanket that you put around yourself. Like I crave wearing this at night every single time. And I can totally see Marie Antoinette wearing this in her boudoir. Totally. Because it has this vintage vibe to it as well. It's so good. Marshmallow by Moore. This is ridiculously affordable and at the same time one of the best Arabic perfumes I have smelled hands down. It is Latafa Rakba and the fragrance inside is intoxicating. For, for me personally it is one of the most well-blended perfect fragrances of all time. This is a woody, velvety, sugary vanilla with a little bit of a smooth oud base. I definitely feel cherry and like this vanilla hookah tobacco blend, but mostly it is vanilla, sugar, and a wood base and blended in such a perfect, elegant, smooth manner. It's not harsh at all. It is vanillary, velvety, smooth. As I said before, extremely affordable. You can get it online. Highly, highly recommend this one. Next is yet another TK Maxx treasure, as usual. <laughs> this is Philosophy's Amazing Grace. Straight up, clean, soapy, washing detergent type of fragrance. This is appropriate for everyone that hates fragrances, they give you headaches easily, everything seems too sweet or too offensive, and you just want to smell clean. It's an evergreen, it had been around for decades. It's not expensive whatsoever. I got mine in TK Maxx for approximately 10 euros, and I had this for years. This is the fragrance that I mostly go for after taking a shower just to enhance the, the cleanliness fragrance that I already have going on, hopefully. It's very uncomplicated, perfect for spring and summer, fresh, soapy, doesn't offend anyone. It's great. Philosophy's amazing grace. Another great and very well-produced honey fragrance is by the house of LPDO called Miel Oud. It is translated into Honey Oud and it is exactly that in this order. It's a lot of honey and a little bit of oud because usually I'm a little bit skeptic and cautious with oud. It can overwhelm and dominate a fragrance quite easily. Although I love oud, it has to be blended well and incorporated into the fragrance composition so that it doesn't smell too pungent and almost like stingy and medicinal on me. And here it is the right amount of oud and a ton of honey. I can't get enough of it. In the dry down, I can definitely detect some vanilla as well. It's super authentic smelling. It's a unisex scent for sure. I can see this um, on a man as well. 
I love the design of the bottle and I definitely have to get more of the House of LPDO. Last but not least, I could not leave the video without mentioning these gorgeous three perfume oils. Two of the small ones are by Al Rehab and I have the scent Elena and I have Choco Mask. Both of these, actually all of the perfume oils by any Arabic perfume house are extremely long lasting, have a great sillage and a great projection. Like people can definitely smell you, although you have just put a tiny dot of the perfume oil on your wrist or anywhere else and you will smell great the entire day. Even sometimes after the shower, I can still smell uh, the perfume oil. Elena is a great fruity floral, um, like a fruit punch almost type of perfume oil. I can definitely smell the lychee and the peaches. It's like a happy-go-lucky kind of fragrance for sure. If you're into the fruity fragrances, super sweet, then Elena is definitely perfect. Choco Musk, as the name says, is a chocolate and musk scent. But this one smells like authentic milk chocolate. I can definitely smell milk chocolate, vanilla, musk, and a woody base. And I think they retail for like three euros or something like that. Ridiculous. And they last forever. And the last perfume oil is by the house of Al Haramein called Dahab. To me, this is an exact dupe to Eau de Missions by L'Occitane, which has been discontinued, unfortunately, which this one, yet again, was a dupe for Spiritueuse Double Vanille by Guerlain, my signature scent. I've been wearing this ever since I heard from it. Yet again, from Amy Loves Perfume. I adore this fragrance. It's a spicy, boozy, sweet, warm vanilla, yet I wouldn't register Dahab as a dupe for Spiritueuse du Blivani. It's definitely more towards Eau de Missions from L'Occitane. But I love it. I can highly recommend it. This will last me a lifetime for sure. I've been using this a ton and yet, as you can see, there's hardly anything missing. It's insane. So these were my most affordable fragrances in my collection. I hope this video was informative and helpful in case you guys wanted to, to get a second opinion in case you were to blind purchase a fragrance. I tried my best in describing them as much as I could and therefore help you somewhat decide to get a fragrance or not. Other than that, Leave me down below your comments, questions, concerns, or new video ideas in case you want to see more content in the future. If not, give it a thumbs down. I'm okay with that too. Stay healthy everyone and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.